Bibles to Hebrews chapter 2. I'll be there in a minute, Hebrews chapter 2. A little over a month ago, I felt this um, uh, issue in my foot, and uh, I let it go because uh, I had too much stuff to do. I got to be on the ropes course. I got to do weddings and funerals and hospitals and preach and do what I do, amen? So yeah, you got to have your feet, and this is, uh, I've had four surgeries on this foot, and I just let it go. I just let it go. Mom, I let it go. And I kept letting it go. And I thought, well, you know, I think it's starting to really hurt and it bother me. But I, I got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. I put my boots on, keep moving. And then Wednesday, I got off the ropes course and I realized uh, it ain't going to let me let it go. Amen. It just, uh, we, well, I call them blowouts on the bottom of my foot where I've, I've already had surgeries there uh, on one side. I have not had surgery where it's at. I'm trying to keep it from having surgery. So I got a, a boot on, I step. What happened was it was slowly getting worse, and I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. The other day, I was on the ropes course, and we were chunking kids off there. And on some of the kids that are a little bit uh, vertically impaired, we will hook a tail on them, a long rope on the back end of their harness, Kenny. And so when we send them down, Keith, y'all can snatch them, amen, with the rope instead of grabbing their little short feet. And so I'm standing up there on the tower, and, and sometimes you just forget. You, you, you're throwing thousands off, so it becomes uh, repetitious, amen. And, and slowly you, you're not paying attention like you normally do. And I was standing on the tail when I sent this uh, not just vertically impaired young man off, but he was a little bit horizontally wide. And as I sent him off the tower, amen, that I was standing on the rope, it snatched my foot out from under me. When it did, I found myself going off the tower with him. Now, I'm hooked up, but I don't want to go off because I'm, I'm on a, uh, what do you call that line? A lanyard, you know, and I don't want to be dangling like a pinata. So when it yanked me like that right there, I'm going backwards, and Jimmy Varon reaches for me to grab me, amen, and I steady myself, and it's all good, and I look back, and Jimmy ain't hooked up. And I thought to myself, we all need to be a little bit more cautious up here, amen, because if you're not careful, you slip. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, learned, so that we do not drift away. We do not slip. The book of Corinthians, Paul said, again, Wherefore, let him that think he stands take heed, lest he fall, slip, drift, move away. The Apostle Paul has given us a reminder, a warning of the dangers we're exposed to. We are a nation right now that is in a peril. Have been for a long time, though. Have y'all forgotten? Amen. We've been fighting battles for many, many years. But first, he's given us a warning of the dangers we're exposed to. A drift is a silent, soft pull. If it jarred us, if it jolted us, Amen. We would wake up, but but you get drifted. You get you get uh, it. It begins to to uh, almost uh, uh, in a place we look we look. No such warning is signals ever given when you're being drifted. We're floating on currents both within us and around us. Within us are our natural appetites, if you would, our natural desires, the love for ease and comfort, uh, the fleshly things that go in our lives. Around us, the spirit of the age. Social customs, habits, materialistic attitudes, and business entertainment. They capture us almost without us being aware. It's called the path of least resistance. We, we look for that path, which is the easiest way for us to go. To drift takes no output of energy. All that's necessary for a life of drift is to relax, to do nothing, to let go, to cease struggling, so, to submit to earthly influence around us. And what we've got as a, as a church world, not just saying little country, but the church world is we've been drifting. We, we've been relaxing. We've been set back. And all of a sudden now we've been jolted. Something that's woke us up and said, hey, guys, you can't live this way. And as an individual believer, you've got to allow yourself to be shaken sometime to realize that you're still in a fight. Amen. You can't just, you know, well, Pastor, I got saved and baptized a long time ago. I don't have to do anything now oh yes you do 
You got to take heed to what you've heard. Amen. You got to pay attention to what this preacher preached last week, what that preacher preached last week, and what's continually going on when you're reading the Word of God. Amen. You got to pay attention to it. Man, you, that's what Paul's saying here. You've got to listen up. Amen. To Matthew chapter 7, 13, Jesus even gave us a warning. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many are going through that. Listen, guys, in my personal life, I've never known anybody that drifted toward Jesus. I've never known anybody just, you know, I, it just happened. I woke up one day and I'm going to heaven. It don't happen that way. There, there, there has to be energy, a, a force of character. It's what we encourage. The Bible says encourage yourself in the Lord. It says after you've done all that you can do to stand, stand. Don't drift on away. Stand. Keep fighting. Stay with it. So in order not to drift, you've got to stand against the tide. Jesus is always urging us to develop personal initiative and determination. To persevere. All through Scripture, persevere. Persevere. It's the word hupomony. Hupomony. Amen. The ability to endure. You've got to keep pressing. I don't feel like it, man. I don't care. You've got to keep pressing in. Amen. You've got to stay after it. To cease being tossed to and fro with every strange teaching. I, I, I talked to pastor this week and he told me he said pastor he said let me tell you we have spent 10 years discipling people here in this church. Amen. We've brought them in. We've discipled them. We've taught them about uh, uh, prayer and fasting and, and, and reading the word of God and staying at it. And he said all of a sudden you churches pop up and offer them some candy. And they run away to the candy. They like the lights. They like the smoking. They like the, the concert before the 10-minute the, the, the sermonette. They love that. And so they rush over to that. And, and all of a sudden, now they're just sitting in a life of ease. They're not even trying to be discipled or grow in Christ. And I thought, dear God in heaven, I've seen that too. Amen. That, 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 that uh, friendly stuff, they call it. I don't know. But, but the gospel is still the gospel. Amen. And it doesn't change. And Jesus doesn't change. As a matter of fact, this was the reason for the condemnation of the men who lived in Noah's day. They lived unexamined lives. They drifted. They yielded their social influences. They ate and they drank. They got drunk. Matthew 24, 37, as it was in the days of Noah. This is New Testament, talking about the Old Testament. So it will be the coming of the Son of Man. When Jesus comes. For in the days before the flood, people were eating. They were drinking. The word drinking there means drunkenness, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered into the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. We're going to see that happen. So the issue is sticking with Jesus. Oh, I love that song. That song is resonating, man. It's the name of Jesus. It demands effort thoughtfulness, self-discipline. How do I keep from drifting, Pastor? Well, when life gets tough, you got to throw the anchor. Somebody say, throw the anchor. Listen to this scripture, Hebrews chapter 6. Paul the apostle, I believe, speaking again, verse 17, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear. In other words, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, his nature does not change. Amen. Verse 18, God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. One, amen, we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. This is that little Chinese uh, uh, evangelist who was laughing before she was beheaded. Amen. She got hold of a hope there. We have this hope. As an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. An anchor. What, what's an anchor for? It's to keep you from being wrecked. Sometimes right before the wreck, you got to throw the anchor. Amen. You're drifting into the shore, throw the anchor. You're drifting into thinking stupid thoughts, throw the anchor. Amen. There's a time to throw the You're fixing to get dashed on the rocks. Your whole family going to throw the anchor. Amen. You know, you got too much invested in this ship. Throw the anchor. Amen. You don't want to keep from going uh, backward. Throw the anchor. You done made it too far. You have been going through. To, you've been at this thing 10, 15, 20, 40 years. Your mama served Jesus. Your grandpa served Jesus. You've been serving Jesus. Don't back away. You've gained too much ground. Throw the anchor. Somebody say, throw the anchor. Throw the anchor. I'll need that back in a little bit. Not right now. I'm good. Okay. All right. Amen. To persevere us from losing the headway that we gain, to keep us constant and useful. The anchor would be of no, give me that back. I might want to throw it again. Amen. The anchor would be of no use unless we have hold on it. There must be a connection between us and the anchor. Romans 8, 24, for we are saved by 
Come on, say the word. We're saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? So the anchor is hope. I mean, if I say anchor, anchor equal hope. Hope, two plus two is four. Anchor, anchor is hope. Y'all got that? Pretty simple, Devin. Amen. So hope, but I ain't seen hope. If I see it, it ain't hope. So tomorrow when I do this man's mess, uh, uh, message over his funeral, I'm telling you, son, I want to give them people hope that we'll see him again. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. That's the kind of hope we hang on to. There must be a strong connection between your hope and your soul. When you can see the anchor, he's not doing nothing. But when the anchor is out of sight, it is doing what it was made to do. So you have to believe. Listen, this one went on with Thomas. Thomas, the, the, what is, bless his heart, the rest of Thomas's life, he was known as Doubting Thomas. Sometimes you do one stupid thing and you're known for it. Amen. Like somebody said, Let's just drive a Chevy and that's it. You're just, you're just known for it. Amen. That was for you, Devin. Amen. Amen. So, so do, you, do, do you believe because you've seen? That's not believing. Hope. That is seen. It's not hope. So first, hope, hope, hope. All through Scripture, you read about hope. Psalm, and I love the fact that, and I I could list probably 50 passages out of Psalms, because David, the giant slayer, the sweet psalmist of Israel, he put his hope in God. He always talked about hope, man. He it was always about hope. Uh, Psalm 31:24. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Amen. Heart is courage. That's what, the, don't be disheartened, have courage. Psalm 33, 22, may your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. Amen, that's all I got is you. Amen, Hebrews 6, 19, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. The Webster Dictionary says that hope is to cherish a desire with anticipation, to desire with expectation of attainment, a desire accompanied with expectation. See, hope and faith go together. It's hard to separate them. Faith believes for something and brings it into your life. Hope does the same thing. It has an anticipation of something that is to come. Amen. That you're believing for the best. That's why I always say I'm believing for the best. I mean, I, w- I want to see the best. Amen. In the Hebrew, the word hope is expectation with a sense of waiting or patience to anticipate with confidence. Our hope in Christ is the only unfailing anchor of the soul. Right now, with all the turmoil that I see in our nation, hope is holding me. Amen. I got hope that things are going to get better. Can I get an amen? Amen. And I can't look at what the media says. Matter of fact, let me tell you something. I pretty much shut the media off in 2020. Hallelujah. A lot of stuff I shut off in 2020. Amen. I can't listen to this nonsense over and over again. All you're doing is putting a doubt in all of our lives. I can't live that way. I got to live by this book. Can I get an amen? So hope, hope, hope in Christ is that unfailing anchor for the soul in the catacombs in Rome. And I know you're familiar with this. Amen. The catacombs is where a lot of believers were buried, and they found their, their skulls there, and their bodies are buried down in the catacombs. But those tunnels under that ancient city where many of the early Christians were buried because of the turning loose of the lions in the, in the uh, uh, Colosseums, the, the martyrs, uh, how they took Christians and they wrapped them in wax, and they set them on poles alive, and they lit them to light up the night. The, the tremendous... Uh, decimation of the gospel preachers of that day. And when they died, they put them in this place known as the catacomb. There inside the catacombs, there were three symbols that were carved into the concrete, the dove, the fish, and the anchor. The believers put in the dove, the fish, and the anchor. The dove symbolized the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anytime you saw a dove, it talked about the Holy Spirit. When you saw the, the, the letters, the, the fish, and I want you to notice they didn't put a cross anywhere in the catacombs. It was just a dove. It was fish. You've seen the fish. It does this little number here. The ichus, I think they called it. Amen. It was a symbol. Amen. They would, they would meet each other, and if they didn't know, if, if Jody here, who, happy birthday, amen, if, if they didn't know that, that Jody was a believer, somebody would take a stick, and they would take a, take a stick, and they'd write in the sand. They'd take and mark this big mark like this, this big oval mark, and the other believer that looked at them, they wouldn't know if that's a believer or not. Well, they would take, and they would mark this great big uh, bottom swell like that, and it would equal the ichthus, the, the fish, and then they knew at that moment, I'm talking to a believer now. I, we can share 
share Jesus without being uh, persecuted. Amen. We can share with one another. So that's how the fish got started. It was on the wall. But the third thing that was on the wall, amen, was the anchor. The anchor came from the idea that as Christians were going through difficult, insecure times, being persecuted, amen, to the point of death, their hope anchored their soul. The anchor was a popular symbol in the early church. At least 66 pictures of anchors have been found in the catacombs. Amen. When somebody put, they put a picture of that anchor. Amen. I'm going to get me an anchor. Hallelujah. So our hope is in Christ. It's like an anchor of the soul. This world is like a sea. Upon human life, upon it. When I read the book of Ecclesiastes, when I look at the book, uh, the Old Testament, y'all often read about seas. It's often talking about the sea of humanity. There is this heaving, this shifting, the surface with great tempest that rises and falls. Uncertainties with endless and unknown complications. So it is without question that every soul needs an anchor to keep them from drifting. When you got born again, you had a choice to hold on and to cast an anchor. Amen. And to have hope in that which is to come. So I defend the anchor today. Amen. An anchor hope is that which supports or keeps one steadfast in the time of trial or doubt. An anchor of hope is there to hold the ship firmly to one place when winds and currents would otherwise remove it. If anything in this world should be strong, it's got to be your hope. Amen. It's got to be our anchor. Amen. For upon it, security and often life depends on it. To ground hope on a false supposition is like trusting to a weak or otherwise no anchor. Wealth, my friend, is not an anchor. I don't care how big your 501, oh, what is that called? 401k, amen, is. I don't care how much you got in the bank. Wealth is not an anchor. It can be gone in no time. Education is not an anchor. I've seen a lot of stupid, smart people. Amen. A bunch of them out there. It's not an anchor, my friend. This liberal culture today is not an anchor. Hallelujah. Evolution is not an anchor. Hallelujah. It's, none of those are anchors. Amen. My hope in Christ is to be anchored to any other ground is not good ground. The Scripture tells me in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why I have hope in healing, because he healed yesterday. Amen. That's why he saved yesterday. Uh, he resurrected yesterday. So I have that hope yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. He's not changing. By the way, can I tell you something? I don't have a plan B. Oh. Oh. If I lost my anchor, I don't have a plan B. I, th this is the only plan I got. Amen. It's this book that I've put my hope in for over 40 years now. So the anchor has this unseen grip. The ship that is Kept by an anchor, all those, by the way, I, I, I tape every week the deadliest catch, so I know what I'm talking about. Now, would I get on that boat? No. Not with this foot. I ain't getting on that boat. It done throwed me over before they left the harbor. Now, that ship, the ship that is kept by an anchor, although secure, is not at ease. I want you to hear that again. You're not at ease. The, the ship that's hooked up by an anchor is being tossed, is being jarred. 2 Timothy 1.12 says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. Again, Paul speaking to his spiritual son, Timothy. I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Listen, I'm not ashamed. Amen. I, I've been persuaded. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm being persecuted, but I still believe in him. The anchor is holding. In this world, you shall have tribulation. Pastor, 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 I'm having trouble. You know, again, my phone lit up this week with so many different things, not just the, the, the cancellation of the Roe v. Wade. Well, by the way, that doesn't mean there won't be abortions. Y'all understand that? we got so many wonderful companies that are providing rides for people to go anywhere they want. And they're so smart. Oh, they're so smart. It sounds like they care. Doesn't it sound like they care? But it's not. This thing's about money. If I can get you to go and, and, and abort your baby, I ain't got to pay for your maternity leave. It's always been about money. It's always going to be about money. Amen. Always follow the money, and you'll find out where the corruption is. Okay, that's good, preacher. Just get a little sideline. Get back over here. A ship that is held by an anchor is not only tossed in the tempest like other ships, but is tossed more than other ships. 1 Peter 4, 19, Therefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Amen. Look at that again. Commit. Commit. Give yourself. Hold on to the anchor. The keeping of your soul. Your soul's connected to the anchor. The anchor is the hope. Amen. It doesn't matter what you, your struggle you're going through. You're suffering. <sighs> we Americans don't like suffering. Do we? 
Just this week, well, I think we've already fixed two or three air conditioners. Why? Because we don't want the saints to suffer. Amen. Sometimes it's just like, you know what, why don't we just crank a, get the heat up a little bit and see who can handle the boiling. <laughs> Amen. I know what happened. You'd run to the next first church. You'd be gone. I know that. Well, God, never mind. Stay with me, preacher. A ship which rides on an anchor experienced heaving that ships which drift with the tide did not know. The drifting ship before she strikes is smooth and more comfortable than the anchored ship. To drift takes no output of energy. All that is necessary for a life of drift is to relax, do nothing, let go, cease struggling, submit to earthly influences around us. Number three here, when the anchor has been cast into good ground, the heavier the strain that comes on it, the deeper and firmer grows the hole. Every time you've gone through a struggle, the, the anchor dug a little deeper. Amen. Every time you went through a little relational issue, the anchor dug a little deeper. Every time that you dealt with people that were persecuting or against you or talking about you, the anchor went a little bit deeper. Every time you believed God when you didn't have no finances and you still gave your tithe, amen, your anchor went a little bit deeper. Every time God showed up in the darkness of night, amen, the anchor went a little bit deeper. Every time you wept all night long, but in the morning rejoicing came, the anchor went a little bit deeper. Amen. Amen. Don't despise what you went through. What you went through caused the anchor to dig us a little bit deeper. Jude 24, 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, to be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. God looked down on our sorry lives sometimes, and I think he said, you know what I got to do before I leave this earth? I got to make sure that I throw everybody that believes in me an anchor. So that everybody here got an anchor. Amen. That, that unseen grip holds on to them. Next, the ship that is anchored is sensitive to every change of wind or tide. See, if you're drifting, you're not sensitive. You're just floating along, going with everything going on. Amen. I'm going to close quickly here. It's going to be a long quick. Hebrews 2, 1, we must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. Pay it. This is why I say all the time, take notes. Write it down. Take pictures, however it is that you're going to help to, to stay. But, but you've not got to pay attention to what you have heard. Remember the word you hid in your heart. The teaching, the principles, stay sensitive to the Spirit's tugging. Amen. You, 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 said that you can feel the anchor, and the more the wind rages, the more you feel the anchor holding you. A ship is safest with her head to the sea and the tempest. Amen. Going into it, not away from it. Ships that are not anchored do not turn and face the foe. The ship that is left loose will be caught by a gust, and on her side she'll go. She'll turn over and sink. Last point. When a ship is anchored and the sea is running high, there's going to be great commotion at the bow. The bow is the front of the boat. Amen. The head. The spear point, the apostolos, apostolic, that whole, that's where the, the struggle is going to take place. The waves strike in rapid succession. When they strike, they're broken. The smoothness at the bow, the front of the boat, indicates the anchor's dragging. Amen. The ship's drifting. You want it back into good ground. Our nation is in severe turmoil. Fuel, food prices rising to record high. Tides keep changing. Hold on to your hope. Readjust your life. Amen. Reevaluate things, but hold on. Don't worry when there's a lot of commotion around you. It just simply means the anchor's holding. Your hope is holding. Romans 15, 4. For whosoever, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. When I'm reading the Bible, I'm thinking to myself, these men and women made it through. They had hope. I got to hold on to my hope. 1 John 3, 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. When we're trapped in a tunnel of misery, hope points to the light at the end. When we're overwhelmed and exhausted, it's hope that gives us fresh energy. When we're discouraged, hope lifts our spirits. When we're tempted to quit, hope keeps us going. When we lose our way and confusion blurs the destiny, amen, hope dulls the edge of, pain, of panic. When we struggle with a crippling disease, or friends or family we know that have it, or lingering illness, hope helps us persevere through the pain. 
When we fear the worst, hope brings reminders that God is still in control. When we must endure the consequences of a bad decision, hope fuels our recovery. When we find ourselves unemployed, hope tells us we still have a future. When we are forced to sit back and wait, hope gives us patience to trust. When we feel rejected and abandoned, hope reminds us we're not alone. We'll make it. When we say our final farewell to someone we love, hope in this life and beyond gets us through the drift. I got that phone call two days ago, a good friend that goes to this church. My, my friend, Bill Calise, he's in the ICU right now. His family think, Pastor, we don't know what's going to happen here. I talked to him yesterday, prayed with him, had him put his hand on his heart. My hope is in Christ. Amen. That, that old man's been in this church for years. His family been here for years. Amen. My hope. I have this hope for days of purpose, maybe longer than that in his life. Yeah, 83. I did his sweet wife's funeral a year or so ago. But there's this hope. I have a hope. Amen. There's dangers in drifting. Don't allow yourself to keep just moving along or going with the crowd. You saw something on news and said, I, I need to be. No, no. What's this book tell me I need to be for? You don't have to be mean. Amen. But there's a dividing line now. It's all, this has always been my, the unborn has always been my dividing line. I can deal with L's and G's and B's and T's and Q's and R's and S's and W's and V's. I can deal with all of them. But that little baby, defenseless, I got to stand up for that kid. Amen. I got, I got to say, God, help the church in the area of adoption to make sure that any child will never go unwanted. Amen. And the need be, adopt that child. Amen. Needs to happen. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Every, every, well, sometimes I can get a little personal here. Beware of drifting. I felt like we all got jolted this week. I think we got a little shocked this week. Amen. With that comes our ability to understand we have this hope. It's an anchor to the soul. Scratched on the cedar walls by anonymous believers hiding from the Nazis. These words, quote, I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. I believe in love even when not feeling it. I want to add to that. I believe in God even when he is silent because I'm anchored to hope. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, let hope rise in this house. Hope to stand again. Hope to rise again. Hope to not allow bad choices ruin our lives. Hope, Lord, in our finances. Hope in our security. Hope in our lives. Amen. Father, I thank you for the anchor. Would you do me a favor, everybody in this house, just take one of your hands and reach it toward the heavens as if you're grasping hold of an anchor. Amen. And remind yourself right now that you are holding on to something that is unseen. And because it is unseen, it's okay. You're holding on to a hope. You have faith in God. Amen. And you're going to come through whatever it is you're going through right now. You're going to come through it in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. 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 Come on, give God praise for his word.